Dr. J.W. Morrison, theologist, Central Coast, New South Wales, Australia. Do we live in uh, Christian constitutional countries in the USA, the UK and Australia? Let's have a look at the United Kingdom. Christians now minority in the United Kingdom. 44% growth in Muslim population in the last decade. Christian population drops to below 50% mark because it's all being taken for granted. More and more Muslims now live in the Christian dominated United Kingdom. Muslim population grew by 44% in the last decade, the latest census figures showed. 3.9 million Muslims are now living in London, up from 4.9 to 6.5%. For the first time ever, Christian population is less than 50% in England and Wales. Christians 27.5 million, Muslims 3.9 million, Hindus 1 million, hang on, that was supposed to be paused, 6, 5.24, whatever that is, Buddhists and Jews. The second most common ethnic group in the UK is Asian, Asian British or Asian Welsh. The census showed one in every three people said they had no religion. The census... Sh uh, it also found that Pinju Abbey and you do have become fifth and sixth most common languages spoken in the U UK. Religion column was added to UK Census in 2001 and it's voluntary to answer. According to official statistics, 94% of respondents filled the religion column. And this leads me to turn to this lady here in Australia who's turning the place upside down um let's just have a listen to this 100 years ago let alone 10 years ago would this parliament have been as accepting <clears throat> 100 years ago let alone 10 years ago would this parliament accept a woman choosing a, a hijab to be elected i will have more about this to say in my first speech in september but for those who choose to advise me about what I should wear or judge, judge my competency based on my external experience, know that the hijab is my choice. I want young girls who decide so, to wear the hijab to... What she's saying is we, we really don't want to culturalise to the Australian way. We want to bring our culture to Australia, whether it is intrusive, invasive, accepted or not to do it with pride and to do it with the knowledge that they have the right to wear it. I won't judge someone wearing boardies and flip-flops across the street. Well, they've got no right to because that's the Australian way, isn't it? That's an Australian standard. Uh, this is where it all gets a bit twisted, isn't it? I don't expect people to judge me for wearing my scarf. Is it the case now that uh, Senator Payman, can, can she remain part of the Labor Party? Well, that's a matter for her, ultimately. The Prime Minister's made clear the Labor Party position, and that is a very long-standing principle for Labor, which is no individual is bigger than the team. Now, this is really going back to a Senate motion where the Labor Party point of view that was endorsed by the caucus without dissent, it reflected the platform position, and frankly, it reflects a stronger position in relation to the recognition of Palestine than any Australian government, including any Labor government, has ever had before. Uh, so, you know, the view that the Prime Minister put, particularly after Senator Payman's interview on Sunday, where she foreshadowed the possibility of again crossing the floor, reflects a very long-standing principle that every Labor candidate has been aware of for 100 years. Is she being exiled, as she says in her statement? 
Well, I mean, the, the position has been very clear. I know that a number of uh, colleagues have reached out to her. I've seen a photo, for example, on the front page of one of the newspapers this morning of Tanya Plibersek uh, giving her a hug on the floor of the Senate yesterday when we were swearing in the new Governor-General. So I don't accept some of the characterisations in Senator Payman's statement. But obviously, uh, her future, what she does over coming days, is now a matter for her. The Prime Minister has indicated a very long-standing principle of Labor, and that is that no individual is bigger than the team. We'd very much welcome Senator Payman returning to the fold, returning to... Labor Party meetings and Labor Party processes. But only but if she toes the line. To well, that requires her to accept the collective decision and show respect to other members of the team, which is, as I said, not a new principle. It's well, been she's a indicated she's principle. not she, she's not inclined to follow that. So, so what happens? Can she remain a Labor Party senator? Well, she's suspended from Labor Party processes until uh, she decides to return to the fold, and that is to respect decisions of the team. She has the ability, if she does so, to talk up in caucus and to put a particular view. But as all candidates uh, who ultimately get elected because they have the Labor Party next to their name on the ballot paper understand, and frankly pledge at the time, you accept the collective decisions of the Labor Party. And I say again, the... the, the, the now, this woman would have had an agenda. <clears throat> she knew once she got in that she could play this game. It was just a matter of getting in. And Albanese, our Prime Minister, <coughs> excuse me, trying to integrate these multicultural um, institutions into our constitution of different religions that have proven to be in too many ways, and I say this very sensitively, uh, self-destructive and destructive to those around them, um, it's not going to work. It's not working in the UK. It's definitely uh, hasn't worked in, in the United States. But if we take the UK as a, a point of reference, it's a, it's a complete disaster. This woman's ma managed to get her way into the parliament through uh, certain um, elements of tolerance and acceptance and um, willingnesses to be... Uh, flexible but now she has taken advantage of it and this is where it ends up the position that the Labor Party put has reflected a stronger position in relation to the recognition of Palestine than any Australian government has had before under this Prime Minister particularly under Foreign Minister Wong well what it, where does this leave you in seats in Western Sydney are you suggesting you don't need that support from the Muslim community because there's already talk about independent teal style <coughs> candidates standing against Labor members I didn't say that at all, Lisa. Uh, you know, we've taken a very strong position. We deplore the loss of any innocent lives, uh, whether they're Israeli or Palestinian. We've called for an immediate humanitarian ceasefire. Uh, we've Jude changed, Blair, frankly, the position judge, in relation judge, to the recognition of Palestine to, to contemplate that recognition happening as part of a pre peace process years. leading to a two-state solution rather than at the end of the peace process. So we've been very forward-leaning on this and very active, particularly under Foreign Minister Wong. So I, I don't accept that characterisation. Yeah, but you'd have to admit the optics are all... <coughs> all of this don't look good for the Labor government. And when you've got conversations already about Teal-style candidates being stood, there's a chance here, is there not, that Labor could pay a political price for the treatment of Senator Payment? Well, as Labor candidates, we've, we've faced independent uh, candidates against us and minor party candidates now for <clears throat> many years. I mean, that, that won't be something new if it eventuates. So it's moment. not going to cost you politically? Well, we, we, we stand on, on our record, and that's not just our record in relation uh, to the conflict over in Israel and Palestine. It's our record delivering cost of living relief, uh, tax cuts for every taxpayer this week, you know, energy bill relief for every household. See, instead of answering the question, they start to spruik about everything that they've done. Senator Payman, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, David. So will you abide by the decisions of the caucus in the future? It depends on what is brought forward uh, in the Senate, obviously, you and I both don't have a crystal ball, so it's really difficult to say. Um, but if the same motion on recognising the state of Palestine was to be brought forward tomorrow, I would cross the floor. You would cross the floor yes. again? Do you expect it will come forward again? Well, I haven't been speaking to the Greens, and I think that's a question you can ask the Greens. But you aren't obviously swayed by Penny Wong, Richard Miles, even the Prime Minister, that you should be following the caucus decision? I respect the Prime Minister and my senior colleagues and obviously the Prime Minister had a stern but fair conversation with me um, a few days ago and I understand that he's got you know very important decisions to make as the leader of our nation. Stern but fair was the punishment if we can call it that of suspending you from a from caucus for a week was that fair? Well that's the prerogative uh, and the decision that the Prime Minister came to and um, you know when I made the decision on the Senate floor to cross I did it with the understanding that this could lead to expulsion and uh, costing my Labor membership.
So you knew that was the price, but you were willing to, to pay it, to vote the way that you did. Um, do you expect any further sanction from the caucus this week? That's up to the caucus to decide. Um, but what I know is this is about 40,000 Palestinians that have been massacred and... Um, sort of see, this has not got anything to do with Australia itself. This is a person that has an agenda for Palestine, uh, for Muslims, for people that are indirectly associated with Hamas, who go around killing people, including their own people. A lot of us don't understand Hamas. Maybe I should get an explanation on Hamas. So let's just see from this man who was ha the Joining son us of now, Hamas. Mossab Hassan Youssef. He is the son of a Hamas founding father and later become, became one of Israel's top informants. He went undercover with Hamas from 1997 until 2007 on behalf of Israel's Shin Bet security services. And he now lives in an undisclosed location. Um, Mossab, Youssef, thank you so much for joining us. Um, what did you see in experience um, that made you turn on Hamas and, and help Israel? You know, since I was a child, I always complained to my father uh, about Hamas uh, abuse of power and uh, their brutality. You know, they, they're very strict and uh, uh, they uh, very religious. Uh, they're fanatics. And uh, but I did not think at some point, you know, they would cause all this global trouble. You know, uh, they, they are, we saw their uh, brutality. Uh, I witnessed their brutality firsthand when I was in prison, when they tortured so many Palestinian uh, people for suspicion uh, of collaborating with Israel. And this is basically when I start questioning Hamas uh, uh, movement. Now, what you've got to understand real and realize is, viewers, this man who is probably jeopardizing his life, they probably want to assassinate him, is the son of the founding leader of Hamas. So these people here, they're not going to know what he knows. Did the barbarity and, and the cruelty of what Hamas did to innocent civilians on October 7th, did that surprise you? Well, you know, they surprised me as they surprised everybody uh, by the scale of the attack. You know, uh, we did not see that coming. But their brutality, th their nature, it did not surprise me. You know, back in 1996, they killed so many people. They tortured so many people. Our, you know, prison mates, basically, uh, people I knew personally, uh, they uh, did all type of uh, crazy things. You know, uh, they... Uh, uh, put needles under people's fingernails, you know, and I, I witnessed that firsthand. So uh, I'm not surprised to what extent Hamas can go, uh, but the scale of the attack on October 7th, that was a uh, surprise, I think, for everybody, including Hamas themselves. Were you surprised at the failure of Israeli intelligence on October 7th? Uh, listen, there was a failure, but this is not the time to blame anybody. There, there, uh, there is corruption, there is failure, uh, there is lack of leadership, but this is not the time now to blame anybody. This is the time to get unified. You know, the United States need to give Israel the necessary cover to uproot Hamas. You know, Hamas, Israel is fighting on behalf of, of America. Israel is fighting on behalf of the Palestinian people. Israel now is fighting on behalf of the free world. This is not a polit political propaganda. I, uh, as an ex-Hamas, uh, member, the son of the founder of Hamas organization. And today, as an American citizen, I ask the president of the United States to give Israel the necessary cover, the necessary supply, whatever it takes to uproot Hamas. Otherwise, the next war is going to be deadlier. I know that you think that Hamas is the enemy of not just Israel, but the Palestinian people. Strategically, do you think it is wise for the Israeli defense forces to to stage a ground incursion into Gaza They're to uproot Hamas. Do you think that's a smart thing to do? Well, you know, uh, now it's a war time, unfortunately. And this war, uh, Israel did not start. Hamas started this war. And Hamas, in fact, uh, in this equation, uh, blood for money, they start a war every uh, few years. Whenever they want money, 
uh, you know, they uh, shed uh, children's blood. Uh, this is their game. And this has to stop. This to ha have to come to an end. And unfortunately, the price is not going to be cheap. Uh, in fact, I feel very sorry for Israel that they have to go into Gaza where there are booby traps all over the place and tunnels all over the place. I don't know how many Israeli soldiers have to die in order to uh, uh, destroy uh, Hamas. This is the most complicated mission a modern army uh, uh, has in our, uh, in our modern day. Now, what I suggest you know, uh, to the Israelis that they wait, they take their time, they collect intelligence. And what I need from the United States to give enough support. In fact, I would like to see the Navy SEALs taking part in this. I know this sounds horrible, but again, I speak as a taxpayer, as an American today, that we need to be unified. We need to give Israel the support. We need to free Palestinians and free Gaza from Hamas ruling. You were embedded with Hamas before you were, well, first you were with Hamas and then you were embedded with Hamas on behalf of the Shin Bet. What can you tell us about what motivates these people? What, what are they like? What are the leaders of Hamas like? What do they want? Uh, well, they are a religious movement. And this is what everybody is afraid to say. If Hamas was a political movement, then we can satisfy their political ambition. But Hamas is a religious movement that does not believe in political borders. You know, they want to establish an Islamic state, state on the rubble of the state of Israel. They want to annihilate the Jewish people and the Jewish state. They want to kill everybody who support Israel, then establish an Islamic state. But this is not the end because their uh, ambition is global. They want to establish eventually an Islamic state, a global state. So this is what's on their mind. And we know that we cannot satisfy their ambition. And the more power you know, we give them, the more aggressive they are going to be. Uh, hence, we cannot give Hamas what they want. We cannot give them what they are asking for, whatever it takes. You know, in war, people die. And we need to prepare public. You know, I say that this is an ugly war. Israel did not start it, but Israel will end it. So the United States insists that the aid being provided for civilians in Gaza will not go to Hamas. Do you believe that the aid will not go to Hamas? Do you believe that the aid will only go to the innocent Palestinians? You know, the United States and uh, Europe um, have been very generous with the Palestinian people, but their leadership steal the money all the time. They steal the aid. Uh, so much aid came into Gaza. Hamas used all that aid to build tunnels under the ground. And now look at the chaos they are creating. The aid is great, but not right now. I suggest that we open the border for the Palestinian innocent people, including women, children, and elders to leave the Gaza Strip or to go into a safe zone. Uh, in the meantime, we have to enforce unbreachable siege on Hamas. Otherwise, we, we are not able to deplete them. They are under the ground. They have hostages. We have to cut power. We cannot give them food. We cannot give them water. And we have to deplete them for long weeks before we can even go in. You know, otherwise, we cannot win this war against this brutal enemy, enemy of humanity. Musab Youssef, thank you so much for your time. Really, really appreciate your insights. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. These are people hiding in a festival. slaughtered since 7th of October and I know that Australians are a fair people and knowing about the Labour Party we are a party with a conscience and champions of human rights whether that be justice um, fighting for freedom or equality uh, so I believe that I've been abiding by those principles of the party. There's a clear principle and rule in the party that you can't cross the floor um, can I ask are you intending to leave the party over this to quit the party? I just want to make a interesting clarification here what do you mean by the party? Because the, the party, to me, are rank and file members, are unionists, are phone bankers, door knockers, long life members of the party who put together the platform. Um, what you're referring to is the caucus and the mm. decisions that the caucus make, obviously, is up to them. Um, but I do not intend on leaving the party because I firmly believe that I've upheld all the values of what, as the Labour Party, we should stand for. So you think the membership is with you? rather than the caucus? Well, I've been so blessed and it's unbelievable uh, to receive the support that I have. Um, it's quite overwhelming, actually, whether it be from my West Australian constituents or from around the nation, New South Wales, Victoria. Um, it has been, you know, such an honour, but also it's humbling and I hope to pay back um, the, the public for their solidarity. But just to be clear, you said... The thing is, she can get all the support and all the rest of it, but that's not going to make her help her to make the right decisions. One of the most upsetting responses to the October 7th massacre has, of course, been the denial of the use of rape and sexual assault as a method of war used by Hamas. ILTV's Ariel Elahiani was recently in London to see just how prevalent this toxic narrative is. Let's take a look. 
do you believe that Israeli women have been sexually abused by Hamas? I don't believe uh, Israeli, uh, any Israeli women no, no complain about it in any media. I don't see. I do believe that Israeli women have been raped. I actually know that for sure. I mean, yeah, probably, to be honest. Maybe it's one Hamas. If, if any one Hamas, uh, uh, Hamas people do this one, give punishment this one person. For, for one person, don't blame everyone. I don't doubt that they have, honestly. I really don't doubt it. I feel like I've seen it in the media on both sides. Like, for Palestinian women and people in Gaza, but also for people in Israel. It wasn't that long ago that the Me Too movement began um, to give... Caucus? No, I do not have any intention. You want to stay? I do. OK. Um, do you accept what Richard Miles said earlier about you wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the Labor Party, you wouldn't have the Senate seat? Do you accept that? Look, the Labor Party, as I mentioned, what it comprises of, but also... When it comes to my election, we know that the 47th Parliament has been the diverse, the most diverse Parliament ever, and you can't have that diversity uh, in personalities and the, the representation, but not have the diversity of views and opinions. And I think uh, it's important for us to consider that you know modern day Australia looks very different to what it did 20, 30 years ago, and it's going to keep evolving. That and way. this is a really interesting point. Um, obviously, Labor champions diversity. Uh, are you saying that they're not in practice uh, accepting what that means in terms of votes like this? Look, we've had diverse views in, in the caucus from, you know, various people, various uh, perspectives on the table, but I think that we need to be able to embrace that, um, that diversity of views. OK, let me ask you about your actual... Now, this week, the Senate overwhelmingly voted to condemn the river to the sea phrase after WA Senator Fatima Payman made national headlines calling Israel's actions a genocide against Palestinian people. Now, do you believe a genocide is taking place and what do you make of this? No, I don't. This um, whole, what can I say, what do you call it? It's just deplorable what happened October the 7th last year. 1,200 people lost their lives. How many have taken hostages? How many are still alive? We don't know. Israel then defended itself. Hamas is a terrorist organisation and it just beggars belief that these idiots who are out there protesting on behalf of Palestine have no idea what they're protesting for. They are protecting a terrorist organisation that have said time and time again, there will be no peace. We will go in and try and destroy Israel again. The two-state solution, will it ever happen? Not when you have an organisation that says you have no right to be here, we're going to keep going after you. We, and of course, I can't, I can't blame Israel for standing up for their rights to protect their own people. If anything happened here in Australia, would we sit back and say, oh no, just continue, try and take us over? Um, and what, you know, what I get angry about is that what is happening to the Jewish community here in our country? Those people that come out here may be born here or came here for a new way of life. Why should they be treated the way they are because of what's happening over in Israel or Palestine? You know, that is, those protest rallies should not be allowed on our streets in the first place. Those, those um, protesters should be stopped by the federal and the state governments. They should actually go and clean them out of the university campuses. Jewish students should be protected and have the right to, to go to do their classes in peace. This hatred has to stop. This is un so un-Australian and people wake up themselves. They're using us to put their own agenda across for what they want to do. So please understand what you're protesting against and why. One Nation Leader Pauline Hanson, thank you so much for your time. I'm Douglas Murray and uh, it's a great pleasure to have been asked to join you this evening. I want to just mention a few things in the short time I have. First is just to mention this, I'm not Jewish myself. Um, I happen to have not just some, but most of my best friends are Jews. Um, but the reason I mention this is that all my adult life, I've been surrounded by, or chosen to be surrounded by, Jews. And why should that be? In my secular moments, I'd say it's been luck or good fortune. In my more religious moments, I'd say it's a signal of God's grace, of the wild grace of God. Because for me, these friendships and what I've learned from them have been among the greatest blessings of my life. I've known Ashkenazi Jews and Sephardic Jews. I've known secular Jews, Orthodox Jews, ultra-Orthodox Jews, Habadnik Jews, and even some Reform. They didn't care what the views were, but they mattered not one jot to the terrorists who broke into Israel on Saturday. They didn't care whether they were killing secular Jews or religious Jews. Voters for Likud or voters for Yesh Atid. They didn't care what the views were of the people they were killing, whether they were for or against recent judicial reforms in Israel, whether they were one of the few people who believe they don't know how to run the country or whether they were one of the eight million people who believe they do know how to run the country. All 
that the terrorists cared about was that their victims were Jews. And that was it. They had to be Jews. I once asked Jonathan Sachs in private what he thought it meant to be a Jew. And he replied quite characteristically by quoting someone else. Specifically, he quoted his friend, the late great philosopher Isaiah Berlin. He said, Douglas, Isaiah once answered this question when he was asked by saying, to be a Jew is to have a sense of history. And I looked at Jonathan, I knew there was something more. He tilted his head and I said, well, what do you think? He said, I think Isaiah was almost right. And I said, so what's your answer? And he said, to be a Jew is to have a sense of memory. Now memory can be a burden. For some people an almost impossible burden. But it's also a blessing. Because if you as a people, you as individuals, know what went before, you know that the Jewish people have been here many times before, in many worse situations, and too many times to count. One of my favorite writers, Stefan Zweig, who my late friend George Weidenfeld, also of London, actually knew in London in the 1930s, both exiles from Vienna, seen off every single one of their enemies for millennia. They have outlived every single acceptable that the Jewish community among all of the communities of this country, in this diverse country, should be the one community expected to accept with equanimity those who cheer on the murder of Jews and those who support the murder of Jews. It is not acceptable that the Jewish community should be the only community in this land that is expected to put up with murder and then being scorned for their fellow Jews being murdered. No other community would accept this, and I beg you not to accept it either. I beg you not to accept it. I came back to London the other night, and I hear the residue of the people outside the Israeli embassy. These people were not protesting against Israeli countermeasures. They hadn't even had any countermeasures. They were protesting because Jews by the hundreds had been slaughtered in Israel, and they wanted to wound us more. Well, they might try, but we should not accept that with equanimity. I've written in The Spectator tomorrow, and try your luck there. <laughs> but you should not be given the right to insult and to taunt Jews after the death of Jews. It's intolerable and we should not tolerate it. Let me say one more thing, and it's the main thing I wanted to say to you tonight. That you're not alone. That you're not alone. The saddest thing I've heard in recent days have been the number of Jewish friends of mine who've said in Israel and outside of Israel, it's always like this. We're always alone. And I just wanted to say that isn't the case. You know you have, among other things, a Democrat president of the United States who so far has been so fully behind the Jewish state it is very hard to see what better statement he could give. We have a conservative prime minister here in the UK, Rishi Sunak, people in this country and across the world who are with you as well. I speak for myself when I quote, if I may in closing, one of my favorite lines in scripture from the book of Ruth. You all know it. Whither thou goest, I will go, and where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God my God. And I tell you this with utter certainty. If they keep coming for the Jews, if they keep coming for you, I'll tell you this. They may come for the Zionists. Very well. I am a Zionist. They may keep coming for the Israelis. Very well. I'm an Israeli. They may come continuously for the Jews. Very well. I'm a Jew. I'm Israel Kai. Their futures and their aspirations. Um, and like I've mentioned in the press conference, you can't want to have a two-state solution and advocate for it without recognising one of those two states. Do you support a two-state solution? I do. So you do support the continued existence of the state of Israel of a Jewish homeland state? Yep, and I, I think that the Israelis and Palestinians can live side by side. So from the river to the sea still it means... Well, <clears throat> if the Israelis and Palestinians could live side by side, why do the Palestinians keep trying to destroy Israel? The state of Israel exists. Yes, that, 
Obviously, the Likud Party Charter says otherwise. They only want Israeli sovereignty. And on the but, other side, Hamas does not want a state of Israel to exist. Well, this isn't about Hamas. Mm. You know, the Palestinian people are not all represented by Hamas. And, I mean, we can draw upon what's been happening in the West Bank. 8,800 Palestinians being detained with no uh, reasoning or trial. Um, you know, so if we want the hostages to be released by Hamas uh, in Gaza, we also need to expect that from, you know, it, to, for the Israeli government to release the 8,800 Palestinian hostages in West Bank. Just uh... As we do every week, it's time to speak to the best-selling author of The War on the West, The Strange Death of Europe and The Madness of Crowds. Douglas Murray, let's start in the UK, the state of policing in the UK, the extremist rhetoric from some UK-based Islamic preachers and the state of the media. ITV decided to give a platform to this woman who, in the wake of the terrorist attacks in Israel that left 1,400 dead and more than 200 taken hostage, well, she was on ITV complaining about Islamophobia in the UK. This is Latifa Abush Chakra, and this is what she had to say after the October 7 attack. Nothing will ever be able to take back this moment, this moment of triumph, this moment of resistance, this moment of surprise, this moment of humiliation on behalf of the Zionist entity. Nothing ever. Douglas, the, the glee, the joy there, it's psychotic. Yes, um, uh, it's psychotically evil. Uh, it's evil on an unimaginable magnitude uh, that anyone could react to the deliberate slaughter of civilians of any kind, anywhere in the world like that. Um, if this was to be anybody else who said that about the murder of any other minority or any other nationality, they would be nowhere near uh, civilized society. In fact, they'd be ostracized, probably chased out. Um, but this woman was actually invited by ITV onto the, one of the main channels, uh, and she, uh, yeah, she talked about how tough it is to be Muslim in Britain. Uh, she, she had a very different demeanor that day, I can tell you, Rita. It wasn't the gleeful, grinning, maniac, psychotic. Uh, she put on uh, a, a meek, uh, humble, and, and worried uh, look as she talked about how difficult it is to be a Muslim in Britain. Now, as I say, we are being played. We are being played in countries like ours. Uh, we have a certain type of, type of psychopath like this who gets away with, on the one hand, praising the murder of Jews wherever they can, and on the other hand, playing the, oh, I'm such a victim and it's so terrible living in a Western free society because you're so mean about Muslims, on the other. We're being... So we're being played. I don't know if you agree with that or not. How much of that is taking place with these women here in our parliament? Um, I want to play that again. Being played. We are being played in countries like ours. Uh, we have a certain type of, type of psychopath like this who gets away with, on the one hand, praising the murder of Jews wherever they can, and on the other hand, playing the, oh, I'm such a victim and it's so terrible living in a Western free society because you're so mean about Muslims, on the other. We're being played, and we need to be a lot wiser to that fact. Now to the police, and we have seen the constabulary have some very tolerant <laughs> approaches when it comes to what constitutes hate speech in the UK. We've had Islamists chant for jihad and freeing Palestine from the river to the sea. We know what that means. But there was no such tolerance for Isabel Warne Spruce, who was standing near an abortion clinic. Now, she was not harassing anybody going in. She was not chanting anything. She was not protesting. She was... Simply okay, so we'll move away from that. Finally, uh, and to sum this up, you intend to stay in the party, but you're open to crossing the floor again on a similar motion on this issue. How are your colleagues treating you over the past week? Look, it's been a, a mix of reactions. I understand um, there's been various colleagues who have been upset with me uh, and frustrated. I've received the cold shoulder, but there has been an overwhelming majority who have stood up in solidarity doing their welfare checks. Um, and I know there are caucus members who have advocated for this matter longer than I've been on this earth for. Um, and, you know, something as, as uh, mentioned by the foreign minister and my... WA uh, Senate colleague Louise Pratt that they've been advocating for the same-sex marriage. And they had to vote against it because it was the view of caucus. I understand. And their advocacy from within, it took 10 years to legislate same-sex marriage. We're talking about 40,000 Palestinians being massacred here. These Palestinians do not have... Yeah, but that's in Palestine. It's not in Australia. Senator Hanson. Thank you very much. My question is to the Minister for Foreign Affairs, Senator Wong. 
Considering Gaza has been effectively controlled by a genocidal terrorist group which invaded Israel and murdered more than 1,200 innocent people last year, how is Australia's support for Palestine's membership of the United Nations compatible with Article 2, Part 3 of the United Nations Charter that states, all members shall settle their international disputes by peaceful means in such a manner that international peace and security and justice are not endangered? And Part 4, all members shall refrain in their international relations from the threat or use of force against the territorial integrity or political independence of any state. So please explain. I thank you, Senator Hanson. Minister Wong. Uh, thank you, President. I say thank Senator Hanson uh, for the question. And I would make the point to her first uh, that all of us uh, unequivocally, well, certainly the government, uh, uh, unequivocally uh, condemns the actions of Hamas. I have said publicly on many occasions Hamas is a terrorist group. Hamas is dedicated to the destruction of the State of Israel and to the, Jew the destruction of the Jewish people. Uh, Hamas uh, has no place uh, in the future governance of, of, of a Palestinian state uh, and we have called uh, consistently for Hamas to release hostages. Uh, the, the resolution that you are, you are referencing uh, was a re resolution supported by some 143 countries which was fundamentally about how the world was trying to overcome uh, the cycle of violence in the Middle East and create momentum for a two-state solution. I want to make this very clear, Senator Hanson. Hamas does not support a two-state solution. Hamas supports the destruction of the State of Israel. That is clear. So a support for a two-state solution, and people might have different views about whether we should have, but it is wrong to say that voting for a resolution that supports a two-state solution is somehow supportive of Hamas. It is contrary to their views. Senator Hanson. Thank you very much. My question is to the Minister for Foreign Affairs, Senator Wong. Considering Gaza has been effectively controlled by a genocidal terrorist group which invaded Israel and murdered more than 1,200 innocent people last year, how is Australia's support for Hamas propagandists will have been cheering the footage of yesterday's cheap walkout stunt by the Greens. They are laughing at just how gullible the Greens are, doing the bidding of terrorists who cut the heads off babies and rape and kidnap um, people more so. The only sustainable path to peace in this case is the destruction of Hamas. Only then could Israel possibly consider a ceasefire. If the Israelis cease to fire before then, Hamas would survive to commit more atrocities because these maniacs will not rest until every Jew in the world is dead. And that is simply not acceptable. The world will not be safe until these terrorist maniacs are dead. And I'll tell people, a vote for the Greens is a vote for terrorism. And until we actually stand up and say no more of this, because the world is seeing these terrorists, um, people on our streets around the world supporting um, Palestine and Hamas, they are a destructive force and they must be stopped. Yes. And so that's why I will use what is within my power as a backbench senator to continue advocating for a just and lasting solution. And I think that's what fair Australians want. And that's what I've been talking to people on the ground in Western Australia, whether they be rank and file members or the locals. Um, and, and that's what I've been hearing. Senator Fatima Payment, thank you very much for joining us this morning. Thank you. So you make up your own minds. Um, why are these people in Parliament? What is their agenda? I think it's pretty clear. Bye for now.